All right, we're going to bring in Rita Cinema to do our movie review of the Oscar favorite, Nomadland. Are we going to get into a favorite of yours for the Oscars, or did you find it the bore that I did? <laughs> no, it's going to be one of my award favorites. I think we've got Nomadland. It's showing on Hulu, fresh off its big Golden Globe win for Best Film Drama and Best Director by Chloe Zhao. Um, this is a film that I has deservedly received a great deal of attention as we head toward awards season. I watched it on Hulu before the Golden Globes were handed out. So, I, you know, I already knew it was a favorite at, when, I, when I watched it and saw the Golden well, Globes. Well, I also sent you the odds, which told you it was a favorite. <laughs> That's true. But it got quite a bit of publicity mm -hmm. pre-Golden Globes, and it will be an Oscar favorite, too, I, I feel certain. Um... The story is inspired by a 2017 nonfiction book by Jessica Bruder, Nomadland, Surviving America in the 21st Century. Uh, Bruder is a journalist who is described as focusing on subcultures and the dark corners of the economy. And I would say that's exactly what this movie does. Um, starring a, the central character Fern, played by Frances McDormand, who shockingly did not win the Golden Globe for Best Actress, um, along with a variety of people who live in vans and RVs, generally having no homes, traveling around the country, taking seasonal work or other kind of temp jobs, and they have settled into this life of sustaining themselves on the road as nomads, therefore nomad land. Um, Fern has pretty much had her life wrested from her as her husband lost his job when the U.S. Gypsum closed down in Empire, Nevada, Nevada, which is a true uh, story. The town virtually disappeared. The zip code went away. Fern lost her, work, her job as a substitute teacher because there was no community anymore. She sold or stored all her belongings after her husband died. She outfits an old van and proceeds to live out of it, working at an Amazon fulfillment center nearby until, seasonal work, um, until the seasonal work runs out. Um, it's in the middle of the winter, and she can't find another job. Uh, but she pointedly um, refers to herself as houseless, not homeless, when a friend tries to offer her help. Uh, at the same time, Fern doesn't want to leave the area. She has ties there. It's where she and her husband lived. Uh, but because she can't find work, she's eventually persuaded to join a friend uh, at a desert rendezvous, rendezvous in Arizona that's organized by... Bob Wells, who, by the way, is a real person, not fictionalized. And Fern is fictionalized character, although most of the people in this film are non-actors and they're living this life. Um, anyway, Bob at this rendezvous and the, the people who get together there provide a support system for each other and a community um, and they bond with each other, even though they're not together all the time. So they're just fellow nomads that help each other out. Uh, so Fern meets these individuals when she goes to this Arizona camp. And she learns more about the nomad culture and basic survival and uh, self-sufficiency skills for living on the road. Um, now the scenes of these get-togethers, uh, of the, all these people in vans and, and RVs and that kind of thing... Um, were shot in various places uh, around the country, mostly in the West. Um, and she meets actual Americans who have taken up this nomadic life. That's why I mean these aren't actors. Um, with the exception, of, there's one other actor in it, uh, David Strathern, who plays a character that takes more than a passing interest in Fern. Um, all the characters in, in the movie are real folks of various ages and um, lifestyles. Um, uh, as an aside, just uh, here, I'd, I'd interject that I think this is one of the reasons Frances McDormand is so good in this film. She fits into this group of non-actors, real people, and, and honestly, you don't even know that she is an actress. You, I mean, you wouldn't know that she wasn't one of the group, honestly. Um, it almost seems as if uh, McDormand is improvising some of her conversations uh, at times with the people who are around her in, in these groups. I just think it's masterful. And um, actually, the group of non-actors who portray themselves in the film were quite wonderful um, as well. Um, uh, very true to life, uh, I think. <clears throat> 
So after her visit to Arizona and that little get together, Fern, everybody kind of goes their way and she's left alone and she decides to take off as well. Uh, she takes up a, the life of traveling around, taking uh, in various places around mostly the western U.S. And she gets temporary jobs there uh, from working in national parks and restaurants. And um, again, Amazon is uh, one of the notorious places that these uh, nomads get temp work uh, as well. <clears throat> as part of the saga, she eventually makes a connection with this fellow um, camper slash nomad David, uh, played by David uh, Strathern. Um, and he has... Uh, he has he she meets him on the road in these camps, but then he is pulled off the road by his son because um, his son pulls him back into the family and uh, because they've had a baby and um, so he goes to live with them after they have the baby and he's pretty happy in his life where he has roots again. Fern goes to visit him and he tries to talk her into staying permanently, um, and uh, she she takes that into consideration for uh, for a while. She also has a. a eventually a financial emergency involving some fixings to her van, uh, repairs to her van. And that drives her to visit her sister, who also tries to steer her away from this nomadic life. And in both cases, I say she's, she's tempted. She's very tempted. But ultimately, she makes the decision. There's a lot more to this, of course. But ultimately, she decides that this is the life for her, and she's okay not having roots put down somewhere. She eventually goes back to Nevada to work the temp job at the Amazon uh, Center and then proceeds at that point to break from her past. She sells all her belongings and takes to the road. And as part of this evolution and her growth, um, she meets a lot of different people, and you hear a great deal from the people she meets at, and that um, she actually formed bonds with, she made friends with, um, they have a lot of discussion. This is almost like watching a documentary, really. They have a lot of conversations with these these real people, Bob Wells being one of them, and he's pretty well known. I've seen stories about him on, on news shows. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, also a character named Swanky, who at the end dies, and the whole group who knew Swanky uh, honors her by throwing rocks into a fire because that's what she liked to do. And... They, one of the things they point out, they, they dwell on, is that they, they know they will meet her down the road. That's one of the things. These are people on the road, and they, they form bonds with each other, but they don't, um, it's, it's like they don't get sad about missing each other or being lonely or anything like that. And um, they, they always promise to see each other again down the road. That's part of the uplifting message, I think, uh, in, in this movie. So that's the summary, and I, I do have some observations as well. If you well, want to add some I things. will start with the good before I get in <laughs> on the bad. Uh, it's a very intense film shot really, really well, and uh, Frances McDormand gives a great performance. Uh, so... And uh, independent films like this do not get made all that often anymore. They've sort of been uh, just wiped out, uh, mostly because once a director does this, said director, you know, Chloe Zhao, is now directing The Eternals, the Marvel film. So basically, <laughs> once you have done your independent film and get rewarded for it, then you gracefully go up and the Disney studio pays you millions and millions of dollars to take one of their I, tentpoles. I think she's uh, done some other things. Yes, but it's very little. <laughs> it's, she's done about four, you know, small independent yeah. films and their next film, it will be The Eternals. So but she's got to make some money somewhere. Yes, like correct. Uh, <laughs> and uh, without the box office for this film to really go to, uh, because it's gotten so much press, and it is the Oscar favorite. My guess is, you know, they sold it to uh, Hulu to run, but uh, I, you know, I don't think that would be what it would make if it had made it to the box office. But I did love its feel, its intensity. You actually felt this person's sort of happy misery. Yeah. Um, so, and, uh, you know, Frances McDormand, as always, gives a, you know, wonderful performance, as right. she always does. Uh but then this movie has nothing to it. It's literally just a screenshot of someone's life. Essentially, you follow me to work for two days as I go into work and come back, and that would be the film. It just sort of 
I didn't think there was anything really to it. You had the uh, little bit of it with uh, uh, David, uh, who actually is David. Yes. <laughs> uh, you know, maybe she goes off, but uh, really I don't ever believe she will go off because she's had she had numerous opportunities right. to sort of re and put her into life and you know so that was where i just i wasn't with it i yeah. i'm happy that the film is made i want these kind of films to continue to be made i like i told you i am a fan of the independent era i essentially grew up in the independent era of film in the 90s early 2000s when we go to blockbuster and we yeah. essentially go just see hundreds of movies on the shelf and we go oh this has francis mcdormand in it let's rent this and go watch it you know uh so that i like but i like them to be better and i can't just be like oh this is a cool indie film that had a good feel yeah just because you know it's something that's nostalgic that i like i just i wasn't with it i'm like i'm bored here I there's nothing that. to yeah. this film I understand, and I do think some people will be bored. I, I think you have to get into the to the character of Fern and kind of be interested in where she's going. And and I think also you have to understand why these people are living the life they're living and kind of be interested in following them. And and it is hard to develop that interest. It's you know, and there's a lot of walking around and driving around, and so there's well, that's no, a, I there's think no that was my, about, uh, we just about. get scenes of her driving, sitting, <laughs> yeah. and sleeping, and occasionally <laughs> walking around, walking around yeah. doing her and job working, and working. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> here here are a few of my uh, observations too, though. Um, I do think the cinematography is spectacular, and I liked the scenes on the road and the scenes where she's standing looking out at, at, um, at, at scenery. Uh, and I think the perspective as she, she uh, you know, travels around the West is, um, I, I, I think that's worth watching the movie for. Um, I, love the, I love Western scenery. I love the geography of the West, and... I think this show, it's not green. I mean, you know, it's that rocky expanse. But you see these vast expanses that are just awe-inspiring. That's always what makes the, the West so interesting. Um, and I think behind it is this musical score. that it, it, I liked the music and the scenery together. And, of course, that, that speaks to well, the cinematographer and the director. Who, that who being did. said, uh, there's a whole channel called National <laughs> Geographic. <laughs> well, that, that really is boring. <laughs> Give me a break. That will show you all this At scenery. At least I had an interesting story here about And put a score to it. So. <laughs> no, I'll pass on the National Geographic. <laughs> Or the nature specials on PBS. I always drop off to sleep. When Correct. I'm out. Well, I think I got the exact same feel on this From film. From No Man Land. Okay. Uh, granted, All I right. did not get a deep voice mail uh, narrating the film throughout. Yeah, so a, that's for sure. <clears throat> I also think that um, it, it, this is really hard to put in words. It's hard to explain, but. I think it's unusual that this film depicts people who are dealing with economic hardship and turmoil in their lives to a certain extent. Uh, she certainly is, um, or at least their lives have been turned upside down in some way. They've lost their jobs, they've lost children, they've lost their you know, spouse, whatever. But you do not ever really feel any sadness as you watch this film. Um, I mean, I, wasn't dep I didn't find it depressing or sad. At times it was somewhat uplifting. Um, you don't linger on what could be a very lonely, desperate life for Fern. Even. Well, I, I think that's why I said I think she was happy in sort of her misery there, you know? Yeah. And, she enjoyed just being out well, and free. It, and Yeah, that's it. It's like she's finding this freedom, and she's always she's searching for kind of what she wants in life, and I think she actually finds it. In, and not being... And she, I think and, the other thing is not being bound to a job. I yeah. think she liked that, you know? She goes to do her... Amazon seasonal work, but she isn't, you know, it's not nine to five every day for years and years. Yeah. You but know? I think she grows into that, this liking the nomad li mm -hmm. uh, life, because at first she wasn't willing to break with her home and, you know, even all her furniture and thing, the things she had in storage, she wasn't going to get rid of them. But by the end, she, she does. Um, and she doesn't mind leaving the community that, you know, she, she grows 
a lot. But you you know you think you're going to feel so sad for these this these individuals and um, and you don't. It's it's just not a depressing, sad kind of story. I mean, it's not a real happy story either. But yeah, no, it's, it's just. It's just a story of life. That's I, what it is. It's a story of life with the and what these could have done with dis- her getting discover. an inheritance or something and getting the fancy <laughs> RV they were all sitting in. In the yeah, but that's uh, it. That not not all of them had that. That absolutely was the truth. Or something and, instead uh, of her thirty-year-old uh, van that was breaking. The other own. thing is, I think you keep expecting there to be some calamity too, like she's going to be robbed and raped, and you know, there's going to be this terrorist motorcycle gang pull in or something and that never happens either no. it, it just that isn't what the life uh, is like now i will say there has been criticism of this movie though that it doesn't that really it doesn't paint an accurate picture of individuals who are homeless and you know although this isn't like urban homelessness yes, these, these individuals have pretty much chosen this life um but there are there have been criticism that this paints a too rosy a picture of this life and that I don't uh, know I wasn't all uh, that rosy about <laughs> and laying that, and, in my van for <laughs> and that uh, not only that but that this life of working temp jobs and particularly Amazon some people are just furious that they showed Amazon in a fairly good light I mean as a happy place to work and everybody's nice and the work isn't too bad and you know well, that... if you're only working two months out of the year <laughs> well that's what I mean those temp jobs I think that's yeah. what she liked, the ability to... Right. If she really didn't like the job, she could quit and leave and go find another and temp actually, job. That, that's the whole point of this. There is, And if you read that book, there is a whole group of people in this country now that actually travel around in vans and work in Amazon fulfillment centers. I mean, they go from one to another and get temporary jobs. And in fact, a couple of years ago, I met a young couple. They, they weren't old retired folks. They were a young couple who had settled here and I, I met them at a, a UT event and um, uh, they had just he gotten jobs, full-time jobs at the university and settled in uh, to a home because they were expecting a baby but they had spent the last several years doing this nomad life and they loved it and they but they went from you know gig job to gig I mean it, it was just that sort of thing so they were not unhappy about it, but there are some people who feel like this movie glorifies Amazon and that type of work a little bit too much. Um, and also, just to speak about Frances McDormand and Chloe Zhao, I do consider Frances McDormand to be one of the greatest, if not the greatest, actress of my lifetime. Uh, I, I just think she is a wonderful actress. Um, and... This really is a perfect role for her because she's so real and honest in it. Honestly, um, I think she could have been, this could have been a document, <laughs> documentary. And she could have been on the road with all of these people. It, she made it seem like that's exactly the life she was living. Um, and sometimes I think maybe she didn't win the Golden Globe because it looked too e- easy. It was, you well, know, that's what... People didn't think she was even acting, but... She really is truly magnificent as Fern. Uh, I and some people are calling it the best she's ever been in a movie, well, which is a lot to they say. They clearly <laughs> haven't seen Fargo. Then. Yes. Oh, well, <laughs> I mean, she that that is a lot to say because she's got some pretty good work under her belt. Um, and at the same time, I think you have to give major kudos to the director Chloe Zhao, even if she is now turning to Marvel comics or whatever. Um, she really, ha- I think, she has put together. You know, boring or not boring, a poetic movie um, that uses scenery and characters and music to blend into a picture of a type of life in the U.S. that does exist out there. And many people may not realize this. And I I think this is what makes me think that you can argue with this, and I'm sure you will, that this movie has the possibility it could live on as a classic, similar to Grapes of Wrath. It won't be Grapes of Wrath, of course, I, I don't think. But um, but it shows a time, a culture, a challenging lifestyle dictated by economic hardship, but also hope uh, as people move from place to place. So I could see it, you know, it's a it's a slice of Americana that could live on in this film well, and I, become classic. I guess I could see that point of view. I, I'm thinking the other point of view, though. I don't <laughs> think it will go down as a classic. I think it might be forgetful even if it does end up yeah. winning the best picture just because 
One, I, you know, I think you saw it in this Golden Globes in the Screen Actors Guild nomination. This is just not a year for movies necessarily. Uh, you know, yeah. uh, everything that really was. Uh, really supposed to be hyped, not just box office ones. A lot of the small pictures also, you yeah. know, got pulled because they just didn't want to mess with it and didn't want to, didn't know how anything was going to play out. So I'm a little scared that this is, you know, the best of a mediocre, a year. small bunch. Yeah. And, you know, we'll just never forget. And then, yeah. you know, next year, the year after, when all these movies are end up going to come out, they're going to overshadow this. So yeah. that, I think... Um, that could happen. Uh, but, I mean, also, it could just end up being, like you said, a slice of America at this point in time. I think it probably hits at a perfect uh, sort of point in time, and maybe it does go down. But uh, I sort of felt the other way that we might end up nobody remembering this film, especially because I don't know how many people are you know, watch it. <laughs> really going to watch yeah. it. It's, you know, all, you it's not even... Or go to the movie I'm not, it's not even streamed on a... Hulu is big, but it's yeah. not Netflix. It's not, you know, Disney Plus. I don't understand why they don't just put this on Disney Plus because at least it would get it out there more. Uh, but it, or it's not even Amazon Prime. Right. So it just doesn't, I don't know how many people are like, oh, yeah. Hulu. We're going to Hulu for a movie. There might be a pretty small audience for this film. Very narrow, I think. I do want to say also that I think Zhao deserves all the awards <laughs> and that she'll rake them in. And maybe it's because... You know, there were other movies that were certainly good, but not great. Yeah. This wasn't a great year. Um, uh, I and she'll have competition from directors like uh, Fincher and yes. Sorkin, um, and even Emerald Fennell with, uh, you know, Prom yes. Promising uh, Young Woman. But I think uh, Zhao deserves the award for what she has put I did think here. her direction was great, and yeah. uh, that uh, movie had a great feel to it. Uh, Frances McDermott's performance was wonderful, mm -hmm. but uh, I, I equate it to... This probably wasn't a real fun movie to shoot for her, I'm guessing. I don't know. I think she probably met a lot of interesting people. But uh, I equate it more to where she's not going to win an uh, uh, Oscar, probably. But I, I look at it as like a old-school basketball. This is a Jerome Kersey performance, a Buck Williams performance. <laughs> you need that grit and that hard worker because she yeah. probably worked her ass off yeah. in this movie. Yeah. And you can't have that, but you need that to help Clyde Drexler, yeah. you know, score his 30 points. So yeah. it's not a, you know, Meryl Streep, uh, you know, role of greatness like that. But uh, I, her performance was just great. I put it as a a Jerome Kersey performance <laughs> where if you understand the game and understand what's going on, you're really impressed by what she does in this. But she makes it look easy, and yes. that's what's so amazing because she's really, really good, but she it, it's not you don't sit back and think that, wow, she had to really work hard. She, yes. It doesn't, you know, it, it, it it's she's just very natural and just an excellent as Fern. Yeah. All right, so let's get to our rating. Uh <sighs> I'm guessing yours is high and it's mine's pretty high and probably yours is probably low. Lower. Yeah. All right. Where are well, we going? Well, I was leaning eight, but I, I'm going to say seven, eight. I, I, you know, probably for this year it should be the ten movie, but um, I don't know if anybody gets a ten. I know it, it, it'll have a narrow audience, and it's not everyone's cup of tea for sure. It is definitely slow paced. Uh, you have to really be interested in in Fern herself and how this character takes on her life and. Um, and I think you have to be able to, you know, deal with the fact that Amazon comes out of this looking pretty good when most people think they shouldn't. Uh, but technically, I think the movie is... Meanwhile, those people are ordering <laughs> things from Amazon. So. Yes, I know. So do I. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to criticize Amazon. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, technically, I think the movie probably deserves a 10, but uh, particularly if you compare it to other movies this year. But there have been other technically good movies, too. Yeah. But I'd give a 7, 8... Um, I certainly recommend it, but I have a feeling a lot of people will just drop out after about the first 30, 40 minutes if well, they make it that far. I'm going middle of the road. <laughs> While I appreciate the filmmaking done, the performance is done, uh, I'm a five on this yeah. just because I, I just didn't feel the movie had any point or story. We're basically just 
watching a woman live. It's a picture of Americana. <laughs> and I don't even know if it's that. So I'm a five. Uh, be sure to get with us on our next movie review. We're going to lighten things up uh, a little bit with Coming to America too. So uh, that should be exciting and fun or disappointing one way or the other. Uh, Probably won't be slow paced and dull. No. But it might make me call back to a more nostalgic <laughs> era when Eddie Murphy was young and funny. Yeah. Uh, Arsenio Hall as well. Uh, but coming to America too. Be sure to follow us on GreenLightNetwork.org, GreenLight Network on Facebook and YouTube. You can find me, GLN Champ 5, on Twitter and Instagram. That's our show, and we're out.